two most decorated and celebrated women's basketball programs in the history of the Great Northwest Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championships will square off again for another title tonight as it is number three, Western Washington University, taking on the top-seeded Seawolves from the University of Alaska Anchorage. Good evening and welcome back to Brougham Pavilion on the campus of Seattle Pacific University. I'm Robert Lowry, Dustin Daniel alongside, and seven of the nine previous Great Northwest Athletic Conference Championships have been won by either the Seawolves or the Vikings. And tonight is gonna be the fifth time that these two teams have competed for a championship of the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. So when I say the most highly decorated, most highly celebrated, that's not hyperbole. That is really the truth, as these two programs on the women's side have really set themselves apart from the competition, at least in terms of this championship tournament era. Yeah, it's uh, really hard to oversell either of these programs and what they've been able to accomplish. Both the Vikings and the Seawolves have had story traditions and just in the last couple of seasons, what they've both been able to do has been incredible, especially for Alaska Anchorage with 30 win seasons, four of the last five years now. It's been an unbelievable run for both of these sides, and we're off to a great start here on Championship Saturday after an exciting men's side, and both of these teams getting a scare in the semifinal yeah, and yeah. coming into this Saturday realizing that uh, they're going to have to step up their game a little bit if they want a title. Well, as we mentioned, Western Washington is number three, and you're seeing some of the action from semifinal championship play yesterday. That's Kelsey Rogers for Western Washington and Anna Schwecki with the putback there. They are a formidable pair on the inside. There's Schwecki going to work one more time. The senior first team center from Colorado showing her versatility with the left hand there. And in the backcourt, this is Lexi Bland, another senior, little runner, a little floater there. And you can see another one that she takes and knocks it in. Bland had a great game. Back and forth baseline jump shot there. And Here's one more. She this time goes in with the opposite hand off the window. And some defense there being applied by the Vikings as well. And that is Avery Dykstra, the backcourt mate, and she's going to get another opportunity right here for the bucket. So that's some of the action we saw yesterday at the semifinals as Western Washington University was able to advance. Now, they had to win two previous games. They beat Montana State Billings in the quarterfinals. And then yesterday, they, of course, knocked off number two, Northwest Nazarene, to advance to the championship here tonight. University of Alaska Anchorage, on the other side of things, they only had to play one game because they are the top seed. And they had a double-digit margin over Central Washington. And here's some of the action from that game. Sophia Yassine, she had her career high of 31 points in that game yesterday. You can see. She was hitting shots from all over the floor. The senior first team guard also showing some defensive ability there with the takeaway and the steal. Another long ranger for her. And watch this shot. I'll tell you, a nice step back shot there. This time she shows she can drive the lane. She's got some versatility, no question. She'll go in this time with the left hand off the window. And one more time here, watch this stop and go move and a little up and under for the bucket there for Yassin, who had those 31 points as the University of Alaska Anchorage knocked off Central Washington 79-77. But that said, Central Washington, three free throw opportunities in the final 3.6 seconds. They weren't able to convert on them. And with that, uh, UAA survives a big time scare. Let, let's give you those numbers from the previous games in the tournament. Western over Montana State Billings, 69-54 in the quarterfinals. They knock off Northwest Nazarene 66-63 yesterday and advance to tonight's title tilt. University of Alaska Anchorage again with that two-point victory, 79-77 yesterday. We talked about the championships between these two teams. They met in the inaugural championship. Now, back in 2011, the GNAC was decided on campus sites. University of Alaska Anchorage, the number two seed, beat top seeded Western Washington 68-67 for that first GNAC title back in 2011. 2012, they met again. This year, or that time, University of Alaska Anchorage, the top seed, beat Western, the number two seed, 67-52. to Then, 2015, UAA victorious again from the top seed over number three Western, just like we have here tonight, 71-58. to 
2017 UAA, the top seed, beat Western, which was second ranked that year, 79 to 70. So in the four previous times that these two teams have met for the GNAC championships, it is UAA which has come out on top. UAA also has the title in 2016 when they knocked off Montana State Billings and UAA was top seeded that year as well. Western has a couple of titles on its own as well. They were the number one seed in 2013. They knocked off Seattle Pacific 60 to 40 for the championship in 2013. Simon Frazier 78-74 for the championship. So two titles for the Vikings and five titles for the University of Alaska Anchorage. Now those first two I should mention, Tim Mosier was their head coach at that point. He led them to those two championships, but since then it has been Ryan McCarthy's team who won the GNAC Coach of the Year Award once again this year. Now in tournament appearances, UAA has been to the tournament eight times in nine years. The only year they missed was 2013. They are 13 and three overall in the tournament and again in the title game for the fifth time in six years. Western has been in eight times in nine years. They missed 2018. Their record 11 and six in the tournament with those couple of championships as well. So again, the two teams we're seeing here tonight getting into this position, getting set to potentially take home a GNAC championship, getting set to represent the GNAC at the NCAA Women's Rest Regional. This to them is something not only they hope, it's something they expect. You know the craziest part of this is we're just starting to skim the surface of the postseason history of these oh, two teams. Gosh, this yes. is just the last 10 years. We could go well beyond this and what they've been able to do. Now going back to the last time these two teams met in the GNAC Championship, 2017, the seniors this year, they were freshmen for that. So we got a handful of kids that are going to remember that game. Anna Shweki and Lexi Bland, they were on that team. They were freshmen for Western Washington. On the other side, Goo, you seen the seniors, they were four-year kids back then. They, they have some recollections of this matchup. So for a couple of kids, this is, a, this is no strange matchup. And the way they played this season, it's setting up to be another competitive basketball game. Well, there's no question about that. This is going to be another great one. And, and you, you are absolutely right. The GNAC has been lo around long before the championship era, the tournament era began. The league's first championship in 2002, and there you see Carmen Dolfo. She has been around for all of these championships. It was won by Western Washington, the regular season title. They took that in 2002, 2006, 2009. It went to the University of Alaska Anchorage. And 2011, as we mentioned, the first year of the tournament, Univers uh, Western Washington University gets the victory there. As the regular season champs, University of Alaska Anchorage is the tournament champ that year. So again, as you mentioned, we could delve in, we could talk about players like Rebecca Kelpinski, who may be the best University of Alaska Anchorage player ever. Post player, four-year star, freshman of the year, player of the year in the conference and this and that. I mean, there's all kinds of names that you can think about from this matchup. But tonight, I think the key matchup is going to be the guard play of Western Washington. You got Dykstra. You got Bland. You got Olson. You got Castaneda. All pretty good ball handlers. How can they fare against the pressure that's going to be put up by Goo? by Yassin, by everybody who comes off the bench for the University of Alaska Anchorage. Conversely, we saw UAA last night dominate the inside scoring against the bigger Central Washington University team. Tonight, Western Washington presents that charge a little bit even to a larger extent. And I don't mean that there's no pun intended there in, in the fact that Rogers and Schwecki and Duff, for that matter, are all very skilled on the inside as well. So it's going to be a very, very interesting game tonight. The inside presence of the Vikings, guard play that is solid against that mayhem pressure that is always set by University of Alaska Anchorage and how they can go ahead and try to take Western out of what they want to do. These two teams split during the regular season. Rubber match here tonight championships of the GNAC. There's no place you'd rather be than watching that here tonight on GNAC.TV. Yeah, this is the spot to be right now. Split the regular season, 
each team winning by seven as well. So in the regular season points, 147 to 147 over the two games. <laughs> that, that first game, it was played in Bellingham. It was Western Washington winning it 71 to 64. And in the rematch up in Anchorage, it was the Seawolves winning 83-76. Now, interestingly enough, Western Washington went 7-3 and three during that stretch of two games between the University of Alaska Anchorage. University of Alaska Anchorage, since that loss at Bellingham, they've ran off 12 straight wins. Here are the starters tonight. First of all, for Western Washington, this is Emma Duff. Duff, six foot, junior, Tumwater. And Kelsey Rogers, six one, junior from Bothell, her running mate up front. In the pivot, this is Anna Schwecki, 6'3", senior, Evergreen, Colorado. Another first team all GNAC performer this year. And here are the two players I think are gonna really be a key. Avery Dykstra, 5'10", sophomore out of Everson, and her running mate in the backcourt. Lexi Bland, 5'6", senior from Ellensburg. The Vikings are coached by Carmen Dolfo in her 29th year, 612 wins, 244 defeats. The 2006, 2011, and 2013 GNAC coach of the year. Now for the University of Alaska Anchorage Seawolves. This is Yasmin Gu, first team GNAC, performer 5'10", senior from Daly City, California. Sala Lange, 5'9", uh, junior out of Pacifica, California, plays that swing three position. In the pivot, Tanay Boliva, six foot junior out of Anchorage, Alaska. In the backcourt, Safia Yassin, who was lights out last night with a career high 31 points, 5'6", senior out of Oakland. And Jana Hajukovic, the daughter of a former UAA star, John Hajukovic, 5'8", sophomore out of Anchorage, is the fifth starter for the Seawolves, coached by Ryan McCarthy in his eighth year at University of Alaska Anchorage, 220 wins, 36 defeats. Ninth year overall, 234 wins, 49 defeats. He's the GNAC Coach of the Year in 2020 and 2019 and 2018 and 2017 and 2015. I don't know what happened in 2016, but he has a big run there as he's won the Coach of the Year now five times in six years. It's Western Washington in the blue, white for UAA, Sydney Mott, Julie Mitchell, and Michael Ann Watts are the officials for this one, and we are set to go. Ball in the air, and Boliva wins it, but Rogers grabs the basketball, and the Vikings will have the first possession here tonight. Of those six years, Ryan McCarthy, eight losses. Oh, boy. Boy, I tell you, that's amazing. It's amazing to think about. We've got a foul immediately. It's going to be called against University of Alaska Anchorage, and the foul is called on Hajukovic. Inbounds on the angle to Duff. Bland on the near side into the corner. That's where you want to keep the ball away. Take it on the end line is Schwecki, and Schwecki hit the end line with her foot for the turnover. So Hajukovic with that first foul, but it doesn't harm the Sea Wolves as they bring it down floor with Goo. And is Dykstra on her defensively. Bland draws Yassine. Goo out top to Lange. Moves to the free throw line. Off right to Yassine. Inside, runner in the lane. And boy, she was hot last night. And she starts off hot tonight with a runner in the lane to give the Seawolves the initial lead. Picks up right where she left off with the first points of the game. Here is Dykstra. Rogers inside. And blocking foul going to be called inside. If it's on Hadukovic, that's going to be her second. No, it's going to be on Yasmin Gu. And here is Dykstra with the pitch to Rogers. And, well, I think that's a pretty good call there. And here is Kelsey Rogers, free throw line for her. And, boy, she played well. Yeah, in 24 points yeah. in the semis. That was a big game. That was a huge game for her. Very talented player. Schwecki gets a lot of the ink, as she should. But I tell you, 
Rodgers is a very great complimentary player up front for her. We'll see if the Vikings try and establish her on the baseline. Those little 10-footers, mid-range jumpers, that's where Rodgers found a lot of success last night. Valiba with a runner in the lane, and Schwecki gets up and blocks it away. Western leads the conference with blocks, and here is Bland inside, missed it. Rodgers had the rebound for a minute, but Yassin is able to steal it away. Brings in the forecourt, off right, Goo into the lane, cross court left, Hadukovic towards the corner, back out high left, Lange across the top to Goo. And the Seawolves slow it down a bit. Goo turns the corner, goes inside, hooks it up off the window for two. And she was fouled. That's a tough shot for Goo. It's the left hand away from the hoop. Yeah, hooks it up, and it was just last minute desperation throw up, knowing that she got fouled, wanted to get something at the hoop, managed to get it to go. Well, and she's gonna go to the free throw line for the and one situation to try to make it a three point lead early in the contest. She will not do it. And last night missed free throws very nearly cost the Seawolves a win. That was the name of the game. They were 10 of 22 at the free throw line yesterday. Here is Bland, and she had a good idea there to try to get it inside to Schwecki, but I'm not so sure that Schwecki was ready for the pass, and we have our first change of the night. Just a single substitution for UAA. That's a bit of a surprise as Stephanie Jackson comes in. And the Seawolves with the ball out high. Lange off right to Hadukovic. They work it across the top. Shot clock at 10. Jackson inside, scoop shot, missed it. And the rebound taken down by Dykstra. Dykstra down floor, loses it in the forecourt, does bland, tie up situation. And on the alternating possession, it's gonna go back to UAA, so it goes as a turnover there. Changes made as Katrina Jamaica comes in to get Rodgers and changes for the Seawolves. Lauren Johnson comes back on floor, comes on floor for the first time. And also up front, somebody who played so well, Kamani Fernandez yesterday for the Seawolves. And Kamani Fernandez having a great semifinal. Scored a season high 10 points yeah. in that game against Central Washington. I thought she was extremely effective yesterday. Out high, three ball on the way, and boy, draining it, Johnson from the perimeter. And the Seawolves jump out on top early by five. This is similar to the start Anchorage had yesterday. They were out to a 10-2 start against the Wildcats. And now, once again, a tie-up situation on the inside. And is it a foul or is it a tie-up situation down there? It is going to be a tie-up, yeah. yeah. So the alternating possession this time goes back to the Bikes. Out high, Jamaica steps into the two and hits it. Katrina Jamaica, 5'11", sophomore to Everson. Very solid bench performer for Carmen Dolfo. Fernandez out high. They work the ball to the left angle to Jackson. Back to Yassine, crossover dribble, penetrates inside on the baseline to Fernandez, lift fake. Schwecki closes out nicely. Shot clock, and there is gonna be a violation against the Seawolves there. Was it a travel? That was a five second violation. Five second violation, okay. And so with that, Jackson checks out and Yasmin Gu, first team all conference. All-conference backcourt for the Vikings. And here is Bland pull up. She made those yesterday, and she makes one here today and cuts into the lead a little bit deeper, one-point game. Lexi Bland limited by fouls in the first game back in the quarterfinals for Western Washington, but stepped up big time yesterday, 17 points in 36 minutes. Dykstra on Goo, who passes off to Yassine. Bland has her pull up Popeye. Sophia overshoots it. Duff with the rebound. And Emma, good ball handling skills as she brings it down floor on the guard of Yassine. Gets the ball back on the left side, out to Bland. Penetrates into the free throw line, into a double team. Ball stripped away, Yassine comes up with it. 
That's what they want to do. Pass out quickly. Goo down floor, lay in good. That's already four turnovers for Western Washington. Well, and that Hendricks is going to be a problem. Pesky. Yeah. And I thought that Western would probably handle the pressure a little better than they have. Bland, long three, good. And we're tied. No good pushback here from the Vikings despite some troubles with ball protection. On pace right now for over 30 turnovers in this game for the Vikings. Left side for the Sea Wolves. They work it from Hajukovic. Hajukovic to Johnson. Out to Yassine. Turns. Goes left. Free throw pop. <laughs> Off the window. You think she was going with glass? I, I doubt it, but she got the shot to drop. And the Sea Wolves getting ready to bring in one of those wave substitutions that they are noted for. Schwecki with a basketball to. Jamaica at the head of the key, steps back, thought three, goes off on the right side to Bland, comes left, baseline, inside, stepped through by Duff, and she missed it wide off the glass left, didn't draw any iron. You know, I had a chance to talk to one of the opposing GNAC assistant coaches about the substitution of Alaska Anchorage, and it just kills your momentum as a defense. If you start to make a little bit of a run to see Wolves, all of a sudden you got five new players on the floor, you have to adjust your scheme, completely changes the momentum at the basketball game. And that really plays into the mayhem that they like to talk about. I'm really surprised more teams don't do that. Here is Goo, and she made that shot earlier, and she makes it again. Goes glass a couple of times. Bland down floor, penetrates, and an offensive foul on Lexi Bland. That's going to be the first on Bland, and Hajdukovic drawing a second charge. And... Uh, there is a look at Goo as she turns the corner for this shot over the taller Schwecki and Jamaica for the bucket. With that, it's a four-point University of Alaska Anchorage lead in the women's championship here of the GNAC championships on GNAC.tv. Royal Brome Pavilion, and this is some action from a little bit earlier in this first half as you see Sophia Yassin who had such a great game yesterday, playing well again today. And University of Alaska Anchorage again with five new players on floor. Voliva back in, goes left corner, three ball up and good by Nicole Pinckney. She gets the deuce from the deep, or the triple from the deep left corner at 16-9. That was actually Rachel Ingram, I Rachel think, in the Ingram. corner. Okay, Ingram, not Pinckney. Down floor, Jackson. Off left, this is Ingram who just hit the three to Voliva in the lane. Turns left-hander, rolls off, and the rebound taken down by the Vikings. Gracie Castaneda has come back on floor. Or come onto the floor for the first time. Into the corner to Jamaica. Cross courts it, throws it, and well, I'll tell you, Castaneda goes up and over a chair, but not able to save it. Let's set that entire UAA five on the floor now. Again, Rachel Ingram, 5'7", freshman, Colorado Springs. Running the point here. It is Stephanie Jackson. Also on floor, Sala Lange. Nicole Pinckney, here's another long three. And again, Ingram drains the three. And Tene Voliva in the post for the Sea Wolves. And boy, back to back threes. Here's the pitch out from Pinckney to Ingram. She knocks the three down from the outside, and it's a 10 point lead and a quick timeout called. A 30 second timeout for the Vikings here. And again, she is a good three-point shooter off the bench is Ingram. She is among the conference leaders in terms of made three-pointers on the year. And she's showing why right there. She drains to, and again, just like in the men's action, somebody comes off the bench, maybe you're not really part of the scouting report too much, comes in, hits two big triples from the outside, and Gives your team a 10-point lead. Well, she flew under the radar yesterday. Three points in 13 minutes. She was just 104 from the field, but immediately two three-pointers down. This time driving inside, it's Dykstra, and she did a real nice job there to weave inside the defense and come up with the basket. 
Out high right, here is Voliva. Her entry pass is knocked away by the Vikings. She gets it back, gets it down to Lange. She has a left-hander in the lane, misses it. Rebound taken down inside by the Vikings. Carly Zaragoza is in there, and she comes up with a rebound and gets fouled by Voliva. And here comes five more. And you mentioned, again, this, this causes mayhem for the other team trying to defend who's on the floor. Fernandez back on floor for the Vikings. Yasin and Gu, the starting backcourt. Hadukovic. And also on floor, Lange stays on floor. Vikings basketball, but down by eight. Dish down, they kick it into the corner. That's a three ball by Duff, and she knocks it down. So Emma Duff from long range for Western Washington. Gets the pass from Rogers, who gets the assist there. You see across the top to Lange. She moves into the lane, gets it back out to Hadukovic, and now to Goo as shot clock in the single digit range. As Goo with a weaving dribble drive inside, splits the defense, misses it, but look who's there. Fernandez put back good. A Western Washington defense trying to defend Goo on the left side. She loves to drive to her left, and it's results in a couple of tough shots. That's the first one she's missed, however. Really doing a good job hitting those difficult layups. Bland misses the long range three. Duff went after it, but boxed out well by the Seawolves to bring it down floor. Lange on the angle, out to Goo. She, there she goes again, left-hander again good. Well, at some point, Carmen Dolfo is going to have to design a little bit of a defensive scheme to keep her off that left side. And she's off to a good start. Eight points already, four of five, all coming on left-handed layups. 23-14 inside the final minute of this first quarter of the women's championship game. And Seawolves with a turnover. Goo down floor, gets it up ahead to Fernandez. Right on the baseline, goes underneath the hoop, can't get a shot, now takes it up anyway. Misses the shot. Ryan McCarthy calling the timeout. Lange instead going to shoot the shot from the outside and misses it. And Bland going to bring it down floor. Ryan McCarthy trying to get the officials for the timeout, and he's a little bit upset he didn't get one called there. Down low, they work the ball to Roger, uh, Emma Duff, who hits the long-range three, and a 12-point game now, but again, a big first quarter for this University of Alaska Anchorage. They had 28 in the first last night, and right here, Guggen to shoot a three, and oh, they're gonna have to settle for just 26, or just 23, we should say, in the first quarter here. But still, a pretty good first quarter for the University of Alaska Anchorage. Western Washington clawing its way back in it after 10 minutes of play here in the women's championship game, as you see Yasmin Gu, who's played so well in this first quarter. It is Seawolves, the top seeds, 23, Western, the third seed, looking to punch a ticket to the NCAA West Regionals here on GNAC.TV. Back here in Brome Pavilion, here is the kick out to Duff for the three in the left corner. And Rogers with a good feed there. UAA with the basketball to begin this second quarter of play. Do you like the quarters or the halves? I'm just curious. Absolutely the quarters. Okay. This is the closest thing we have in collegiate basketball to the NBA format. Women's basketball much closer than men's basketball right now. I much more appreciate the women's format. UAA with the basketball. Here's Fernandez. Pitch it out on the wing to Jackson. Penetrates back to Fernandez right side. Shot off the front rim. She follows, gets her own shot back. Quickly in the corner to Yassine, takes the baseline, double comes. She gets it off to Jackson, penetrates high off the glass for two. Stephanie Jackson out of McKinney, Texas, coming to play at UAA. YLK, or Western gets it down low and gets it off the window. 9-19 left in this first Half of play. That's the first field goal for Kelsey Rogers. Four points for her. Both sides shooting very well. That's going to move Western Washington to 70% from the field, but eight turnovers plaguing them right now. Yeah, you just can't give the basketball away. Here is a throw with the left hand by Yassine. It drops, and she earns the free throw as well on the foul. Now watch right here. She drives inside. Duff got her. Also coming over that time, it was Zaragoza. I think the foul on Duff it is.
spot. Earlier, she can go with either hand, and she did there with a high scoop that dropped through. Zaragoza out as Schwecki back in to play in the pivot for the Vikings. And you've seen trying to complete the three-point play here to make it a nine-point lead for UAA. Free throw up, good. Now, Vu and Yassin now combining for 15 points in this game and a combined 7 of 10 from the field. And the ball tipped out of bounds by Yassin. Well, again, Gu and Yassin, first team all GNAC performers in the backcourt. There's a great look at Ryan McCarthy, coach of the year for the GNAC, looking out on the floor. Near side, Dykstra, back out to Bland. UAA now matching up a little bit out of a zone and an entry pass tipped away. You've seen coming back down floor for UAA. Going to drive inside, get it off underneath. Shot missed by Believer, but she was fouled. That's turnover number nine now for Western Washington. Points off of turnovers, 13 already for Anchorage. Well, 13 of the 28. So nearly half. Yeah. Change for the Vikings as Gracie, Gracie Castaneda back in. And here is Gu returning for the Sea Wolves. And the free throw up and good, 29 to 19 in favor of the Sea Wolves. So if Valiba hits this, that'll make it exactly half of Anchorage's points total will be off of turnover she well, does. That's 15 to 30 now. There it is, as you mentioned. And Katrina Jamaica going to come back in for the Vikings. So Schwecki, Jamaica, Dykstra, Bland with the basketball, and Castaneda. Yassine and Gu, the all-star backcourt in. Boliva down inside guarding Schwecki. I have to mention already, Duff with two fouls. Bland, corner, hook pass, Schwecki in the lane, and lost the ball out of bounds, and it's just going to be a turnover for the Vikings as Schwecki lost the basketball. Dykstra out in for Western. And now is Monique Fierke. Fierke, who played some yesterday, 5'7", sophomore from Monroe. And the Vikings now, a little bit of a 2-3 zone matchup look out front, and it pays dividends right away as they turn over the Seawolves. Bland. They work in the corner of Jamaica. Castaneda, free throw line. I thought she was going to cast off from there. She does not. She gets the pass back from Bland. Looking down low to Schwecki, but Bland drives, lays it up and in. It'll count, and she got fouled. Bland to the free throw line for the and one situation as she was fouled there. Her time on the floor was limited in game number one of this tournament for Western Washington. Back in the quarters, only played nine minutes because of foul trouble. And as we talked about, bounced back yesterday for 36 minutes. Scored 17 points and having another good offensive start. Seven points already in this game for Bland. She gets her first chance at the free throw line. Senior leadership, that's what you got there as she knocks down the free throw. It's back to an eight-point game. I'll tell you, these are two excellent backcourts that you are seeing tonight here in action. Hadukovic, or no, actually we should say Ingram hit those two big threes, and now Yassine shows her range from the right side. On the season, UAA from three-point range, 35%. Roughly. And the Vikings working the ball around the perimeter. But again, where does the good shot come against this defense? That's what they try to find. And with the double teaming, it's hard to get a good look ever. Spin dribble out high, pass in. And that's what the Seawolves want you to do. Make a desperation pass, looking for something that's just not there. And Goo goes end to end, lays it up. She's fouled as she went on the left side again. Yeah, I, that's going to be every lib. She, she really doesn't go to her right. Uh, if she gets forced off to the right, she'll do a cutback move. Uh, so Western Washington's either got to force her to the right, make her take that shot that she really doesn't want to. And until then, Google more than glad to be able to go to her strong side. 
Molly Olson coming in. And here is Kelsey Rogers returning for the Vikings. And back on floor for the Seawolves. Hadukovic has returned, as has Lange. And here is Goo's high arching free throw off the back iron and out. As a team, UAA this year, free throw line. 71%. And she makes the second. They had a little bit of trouble there from the charity stripe yesterday, but Goo goes one of two there and makes it a 12 point lead. Well, four of six to start at the line for Anchorage. Still not a great mark. Rogers down low made the pass across the baseline to Jamaica, who got fouled from behind. And you can see it. Here's the pass in low. Rogers. As the double team comes, went to Jamaica, and Yassine slapped her across the arm for the foul. Second team foul this quarter against UAA. Western Washington with three. Throw in going to be made by Olsen. And she got it into the corner to Dykstra. I don't know who exactly she was throwing it to. Dykstra down low. Rogers, double team comes. She gets it back out. And... Olsen, and a foul called on a drive by Castaneda. So UAA picks up another foul, and that's going to draw a response from the Seawolves bench. You can see the penetration there. I think Fernando is going to be called for the foul. No, it's going to be Yasmeen Gu oh, that picks cool. it up. It's going to be her second. So she'll head to the bench. As back in for her is Stephanie Jackson. Down low, Rogers. Get it in the post, turn, shoot, back irons it, no good. Rebound tipped, and Hadukovic comes up with it and gets it off to Jackson. She'll bring it down floor. Motion, motion. Guarded by Olsen. And there's a collision between three bodies, and the foul going to be called on Olsen of the Vikings. University of Alaska Anchorage outscoring teams by 21 points a game this year. Field goal percentage defense, they lead the conference in that stat as well. And you can see why here tonight. Every time there's a pass to a player, especially around the paint, you have two, if not three, players right on top of you. Yeah. And here is Yassine, penetrations on the left side. Well, I tell you, that left side tonight, that has been the bank for UAA. Down floor, the Vikings with a backdoor cut to Dykstra, and she travels. Turnovers just not slowing down for Western Washington. The differential is now 12 to two on turnovers. Well, I, I really thought the, the, the veteran play of these guards for the Vikings would do a little better job, but boy, this, this, uh, this mayhem style defense, uh, it's, it's tough to overcome. Lange down floor, left hander off the window. You know another one that's really surprising right now? Points in the paint, 20 to 8 in favor of Anchorage. Well, they only have one player that's six foot or taller. On the other side, Western Washington is five. Well, this is what happened it's against Central Washington last night where they dominated the paint points as well. And inside, Zaragoza gets fouled. Fourth team foul each way as back in for the Seawolves, Pinckney and Lauren Johnson. So Pinckney... Johnson, Jackson, Hadukovic, and Fernandez on floor. Nary a starter. On, well, actually, Hadukovic is a starter. And they tip away the inbounds pass by the Vikings to the Seawolves. And Dykstra knocks it away and a steal by the Vikings. Down floor, they work it and score in the basket in transition. It is Castaneda. Vikings give the Seawolves a little bit of their own medicine there. Hadukovic for three, misses it from the outside. Offensive rebound and a foul called. Rogers on the reach in, fouls Johnson. Fifth team foul. And we've come to a timeout. 4.58 to go in this first half of play. It is the University of Alaska Anchorage Seawolves, the top seed with a 14-point lead over number three, Western Washington University. These are the 2020 GNAC Women's Basketball Championship Finals on GNAC.tv. Here is Yassine on the baseline with that tough shot on the defense there by Castaneda. 
And then Lange going with the left hand on the drive down the left lane as part of that points in the paint tonight. Differential in favor of UAA. Lauren Johnson, 5'7", junior, Crystal, Minnesota. Knocks in the free throw. That extends the lead just a little bit more. Inside the final five as Schwecki gets set to return after this free throw. And she will. And it's going to be, once again, Zaragoza checking out. So Dykstra, Castaneda, Olsen, Jamaica, and Schwecki on floor. And again, that pressure defense, swar it's just a, that's what it is, it's a swarming defense. Long shot missed on the outside by the Vikings and the rebound to the Sea Wolves and Jackson into the forecourt off left. Hadukovic to a cutting Pinckney, spins it back out on the angle, top side to Voliva, Johnson, Jackson. Around a high pick set out by Voliva. Gets the basketball at the free throw line. Lift fake, free throw line. Gets it back to Jackson for a three head on. Misses the shot. Johnson, great offensive rebound as she grabbed it and threw it off the backside of a Western player. I think she threw it off Jamaica. So a 20 seconds put back, uh, 30 seconds put back on the shot clock as that shot was taken with three. And boy, I tell you, that was a very athletic play by Johnson there. Uh, she was able to get it and then get, well, actually, they're going to say apparently she was out of bounds. Well, the initial call was it was going to stay Anchorage basketball, and that's why they reset it to 30 is because they, they turned it over and uh, made it a Viking basketball. Well, the Vikings, they give it back right away. How many turnovers now? That's the 14th. 14 turnovers in, well, not quite 16 minutes of play. That's a turnover a minute. That's not going to win a basketball game. That will not. And the thing is, they're still shooting really well, 64% from the field. They just can't get the shots up each time down the floor. It's been hesitant if they're going to hold on to it. They've only got 14 shots up compared to the 27, now 28, of Alaska Anchorage. Missed by Johnson, and the Vikings rebound. Bland down floor. Seesaw dribble, picks it up. Double team comes. Everybody trying to pick the basketball away to Jamaica. Castaneda going to handle. Near side to Bland. Down low to Schwecki. Inside, double team comes, and she'll be called for steps, I believe. Yep. Yasmin Guga, she has two fouls, going to come back in for the final 327. Is Jackson out? Hadukovic out as well. As back in Rachel Ingram. As we mentioned, Ingram, number seven in the conference and made three pointers. She makes just under two a game. She's hit here, here in the first half. And she has the basketball there. Weave out top. Goo gets the basketball. Baseball's it across the top to Johnson. Handoff coming around the outside. Ingram now. Pinckney back into the corner. Here's another one by Ingram. This one does not go. Long rebound taken down. Castaneda has it for Western Washington. Into the forecourt near side. First time touching the basketball is Madison Coleman. Out to Jamaica. Right side, Bland. 16-point lead for the Seawolves. Castaneda inside, left-hander off the window. Comes up a bit short. Schwecki swoops in, trying to get the rebound. Can't. Tie-up situation. Held the ball. It's going to stay Western basketball. As Lange and Yassine return. As Pinckney and Johnson step away, Fernandez is going to return for Voliva as well right here, I believe. Has some mop-up work being done on the floor. And also, Stephanie Jackson returns, so as Goo is going to step back out too for a moment. She was only on the floor there for seconds. Well, that's the nature of these substitutions for Alaska Anchorage. Could be a minute, could be five that you're out on the shift, but it's not going to be too long. Schwecki misses the long-range two-pointer. And Jackson into the forecourt, into the corner. Bad pass, and Coleman knocks it away. Right into the bench of Western Washington. There's a good look at Carmen Dolfo as she sends Carly Zaragoza back in. And Schwecki out. And now here's Goo back in for the Seawolves as Jackson comes out. 
Guggen to trigger it in right in front of the Vikings bench. And she's going to be challenged by Castaneda on the inbounds toss in. Who's she going to go to? Gives it out to Lange. Hands back off to Goo. Comes to the left, or actually comes out top. Guarded by Jamaica in a switch. Near side, handoff. Top side to Lange. Looking right, handing off right. And Yassine with eight on the shot clock. Going to penetrate. Pulls up with five shoots and hits. Such a smooth shot for Yassine. Already 14 here in the first half of play. And she's only, she's only missed one. Six of seven on field goal shooting. Only six of seven. And again, 31 yesterday, her career high. She's making a statement potentially for MVP. Here's Bland with a miss. Jamaica had the rebound for a moment, but a good play by Fernandez, who flips it back in, and Lange brings it for court. Yassine and Goo out top. Coleman reaches in, and actually, I think she got Goo in the right eye by accident. And... As Goo recovers, both teams are going to go to their respective benches for a moment. And I'll tell you one thing, getting poked in the eye like that, and again, certainly inadvertently, inadvertently without any question. But that said, that is painful, no question. And Goo trying to blink it out right now. I think she's probably going to have to come to the bench. And how many times, and I know you've done games for a number of years, and how many times you've seen, and it happens frequently, somebody with a contact, you see that pop out, and... Everybody looking on the floor for it. And here it is right there. Reach in by Coleman trying to poke the ball away and actually just got into Goo's air eye area. There's Coleman Dolfo, veteran head coach. Again, 29, year, 29 years as head coach of Western Washington University. Before her career is over, and she's got 612 wins already, Man, oh man, how many is she going to rack up? 700, 800, with the a way thousand? The, year in and year out with the way this Western Washington team plays, it's not going to be long until she gets to 700. Oh, no, no, no question about it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just wondering, quite right. frankly, could she get to 1,000? Is that doable? Let's look at the other side of this. Rusty Osborne, we were talking about, if he, if he got the win tonight, that would be 300 for him. He's been going for that since 2004. So, if it was to take another 16 years, I can't imagine Carmen's going to be coaching another 16 years. Getting, getting just another 300 to even get her in the ballpark over the 900 mark, man, yeah. that would that would be impressive. It's just well, you know what? If she never won another game, it would be an impressive yeah. career with 612 wins. She, she doesn't have to do another no, thing. No, no, there's no question about it. And Ryan McCarthy. He already has, and he's only been coaching nine years, has 234 wins. So two great coaches here. And again, between them, Coach of the Year honors three times for the Western Washington University coach, Dolfo, who you see right there. And McCarthy has won it five times already. Now, I'll tell you one thing. Carmen Dolfo's team is down. They're down by 18 right now. Yeah. But we have seen throughout this tournament Game in, game out. Night in, night out. Thursday, Friday, and earlier tonight, that no lead is insurmountable. And we saw it last night as a double-digit lead for UAA against Central Washington. Got chipped away, chipped away, chipped away, and at the end, opportunity for three free throws to possibly tie or put the Wildcats in the lead in the final seconds of the contest. It was not to be, but again, uh, even though the Seawolves have a nice lead right now, again, I, I don't think this game, this game will be back in single digits. I tell you, I guarantee you at some point later tonight. Well, Anchorage, we talked about up by 18. They were up by 15 in the semifinal yesterday. Both these teams held big double digit leads that were whittled away for Western Washington. They were up by 16 yesterday, only ended up winning by three against Northwest Nazarene. For Anchorage, up by 15, only won by two. And for the Wildcats, yeah, it just came down to those few free throws that meant the difference in that ball game. Well, Goo is on the bench now. 
She's getting a little ointment in that right eye. We haven't even talked about this, but Danny Awami, a great guard for Western Washington. She's been out for a couple of months now with a knee injury, which is a tough break for the Vikings because she was a starting backcourt performer and another good guard for the Vikings, not able to play here tonight. Shot clock at five for the Seawolves. Jackson, head of the key, left side Lange, not able to get a shot away. Gets one off, but not until the horn had already sounded. So a shot clock violation, and our shot clock operator sitting next to us right on top of it tonight. We haven't had many of those. Well, We've only had three, I think, or maybe four in the first couple of days. Yeah, no, it's been pretty lean as far as shot clock violations. Stephanie Jackson, though, she's got to be here in her bench calling the countdown on the shot clock, but decides to take the extra pass instead of getting up a shot. Here is Dykstra, takes the baseline into the double team. Out to Cole, wow, outside Madison Coleman. The junior out of Sacramento knocks in the long Ranger. Inside the final minute of this first half. Haven't had the opportunity to call Coleman's name too much this tournament. No, but that was a nice looking three by her. Jackson gets the basketball off to Yassine, follow a jumper. I think a Viking player might have got a hand on it or not, apparently not. Goes out of bounds as it went off the rim out of bounds and back over to the Vikings. Ingram out, Hadukovic is back in for UAA. And just a couple of seconds difference between the shot and the game clocks here. So the Vikings may opt to just go ahead and try to work for something good. Schwecki, who has really not had much of an offensive presence tonight, looking to post up on the inside. But again, Fernandez fronting her there. Cross pass across the top to Bland. And she drives inside and turns it over with 8.8 .8 seconds left in the first half. That's and that nice. has been the story of the first half. Yeah, those turnovers have been brutal. That's With that turnover, 16 for Western Washington, just four on the other side for Alaska Anchorage. Sierra Tate comes in as Jackson out. First time we have seen Tate in the tourney. 5'6", freshman out of Fairbanks. Inbounds, here is Yassine at midcourt with six. Takes it down, shoots at the buzzer, missed it, but gets fouled with 2.3 seconds left. So well before the buzzer, frankly. And Yassin gonna go to the free throw line. Leading score on the year, 14.7 points a game for Yassin. Well over that yesterday. And you can see right there, and the Vikings came out and actually three players on her. And I think Schwecki, no, actually Dykstra with a foul. Yassin now to the free throw line. Also leads the team in a couple of other categories. Misses the free throw there. Number five in the conference, an assist to turnover ratio to that woman right there, Yasmin Gu, who's number two in that regard and leads the Seawolves in assists. But right now, just uh, probably going to sit out, obviously, the rest of this half and get ready for second half action after getting poked in the eye inadvertently. Next one by Yasin also down. 2.3 seconds inbounds. And here is a heave, and it's going to be nowhere near as Dykstra not able to get it down floor as the first half comes to a conclusion. And, well, it's been a big first half for the University of Alaska Anchorage with that mayhem defense. And, and that woman right there, Sophia Yassin, offensively leading the Seawolves to a 16-point lead at the intermission. After the first 20 minutes of play in the GNAC 2020 Women's Basketball Championships, it's a top-ranked Seawolves 43, Western Washington 27. Halftime guest, Seattle Pacific University at leg director, Jackson Stava is going to join us here courtside after this break on GNAC.tv. Women's championship action, one half to go to crown a conference winner tonight. The University of Alaska Anchorage with a 16-point halftime cushion and if you're Western Washington you know what you're saying to yourself the way this tournament's gone they got them right where they want them because no lead frankly has been insurmountable that we have seen at least to this point in the 2020 GNAC championships 16 points doable doable in the second half still got a lot of basketball left to play but, man, these Vikings have to get the turnovers under control. 16 in the first half, eight in each quarter. And, you know, given that the, the turnover margin was 16 to 4 in the first half, they're doing okay in the points off of turnovers category right now. 
Last game, Anchorage able to score 19 points off of turnovers. Western Washington had 10, so despite giving up four times as many turnovers, they still have less than half of the, or I should say, they've been able to hold Alaska Anchorage less than double the points off turnover. So in that regard, they're doing okay given how many they've given up. But if they're going to give up that many again, this game's over. Well, let me say this right now. How many do they have? Four turnovers. Oh, I mean, how many do uh, the Vikings have? Western Washington has given up 16 turnovers. Yeah. How many do the average on the year? On the season? 16 and a half. So they had their season total in the first in half. The first half. Without a, a half of a turnover. Yeah, and that, that's a big credit to the Alaska Anchorage defense. Best in the conference, one of the best in the nation. They've been able to get in these uh, passing lanes. But more so than that, it hasn't been a lot of open air passes that we've seen snatched out. It's been creating uh, turnovers by travels. They've been getting the traps in the corners. Players have been trying to get out of it with passes and been pulling the pivot foot, throws out of bounds, sloppy passes, things like that. So these traps on the outside for Alaska Anchorage have been extremely effective in the first half. And we'll look for that to continue as Western Washington works a weave on the outside. We'll see these double teams show up out of nowhere. And the Vikings just don't see them coming. They get themselves into trouble. And it is going to be second half play beginning with the University of Alaska Anchorage with the basketball. Yasmin Gu, good to see her back out there after she got poked in the eye in the later stages of the second quarter. Sala Lange, also Tane Baliba, Sophia Yassin, and Jana Adukovic on floor. So they start the five that began the game. Adukovic, Lange, they work it to the left side to Gu. She loves that side of the floor. Off to Lange underneath the hoop, reverse lay in good. For the Vikings second half, Lexi Bland, Avery Dykstra, Emma Duff, and down low Rogers, Kelsey Rogers, and Anna Schwecki, who have really not been much involved in the offense. Down inside, they get it this time to Schwecki, who turns and lays it in. And I'm sure that was a topic and a point of emphasis during the halftime break. Yeah, I mean, it has to be. That, that, was, that was their big Achilles heel in that first half. They were shooting really well. They just couldn't get enough shots up. Yassine, who is just playing lights out basketball here, misses the shot in the lane. Rebound tipped to Rogers. Bland, a down floor on the fly on the left side. Gets it out to Dykstra. Thought about a three. Instead goes to Duff. She doesn't think she shoots and shoots it too strong. Goo down floor. And she is bumped and fouled by Dykstra. First foul of the second half. Third quarter underway here. And you can see it. Goo and Dykstra with a reach in and with that right hand. And picks up the foul and here are some changes as Kamani Fernandez comes back in to play up front. Also Lauren Johnson in. Gu with the throw in. And Kimani Fernandez is also back on floor. Here is Gu, left side again, step back. Cross to the right side for the step back three by Hadukovic, misses it. And Fernandez ties up Schwecki on the inside. On the alternating possession, it'll be Western basketball. So here's the change being made as Goo out. And Stephanie Jackson returns. Western down by 16. And they have lost four previous Conference Championship Tournament games to UAA. Here's Rogers with the pop just inside the top of the circle. It's good. Uh, she's been quiet. Six points now for Rogers after that make, however. Well, she's got no open shots. Every time she gets the basketball, she has four, if not six, hands poking away at the basketball. Yeah, she's only been able to put up three shots in the game, two or three from the field. Jackson misses at the free throw line. Johnson had the rebound and manages to corral it and get it back out to Jackson. Top side left around the Johnson screen, moves to the free throw line, backs it out and passes to Fernandez. Off to Yassine, misses the shot. 
There's Johnson inside, and the rebound poked away from her out of bounds. It'll stay in the possession of the Seawolves. 20 on the shot clock. Back up there. And Jackson going to trigger it in from the baseline left of the basket. And a foul called on the inbounds as Yassine got knocked down, and the foul going to be called against Western Washington. And that is going to be called, well, Kelsey Rogers picks up her third, and boy, that doesn't help at all. Well, looking at the foul situation for Western Washington, before that foul, four of the five Viking starters were all dealing with two. So at the beginning of these quarters, it's going to be an issue. Any foul, it's going to be the third for someone, so Rogers just happens to be the one. And you got a good look there on the replay. Rogers bumped into Yassin, who went down in a heap. And here's a throw in by Jackson. Inbounds knocked away by Duff. Down floor, can she get the ball? She can't get it to Jamaica, now she does. Katrina misses the short shot. And the rebound put back up and in by Schwecki. The Vikings. Double dribble called yeah. on Duff in transition. She got it hooked up on her hip. Got stuck there for a second, but no official shot. So play went on, turns into two points. Adukovic, Yassine, Johnson, Jackson, Penetration, spin, shot blocked, foul called on Dykstra. Or is it going to be on Schwecki? It's going to be the first on yeah. Schwecki. Well, let's watch it right here. Here's the spin. I thought it was going to be on Dykstra, but Schwecki, and she, you can see her, she taps her chest and says, no, that was my mistake. Free throw line, Stephanie Jackson, and she knocks that one in. Schwecki, senior. Bland, senior. The only seniors on this Western team, so this is still a young, young squad. Jackson knocks down the second. Seawolves equally young for the most part. They have three seniors. Two of them, the backcourt of Gu and Yassin, and Emily Motts as well playing their senior campaigns. Long three, and Duff not able to get it to drop for Western, and Goo gonna speed up the floor on the right side. Takes it left, takes it down, and cross courts it to Hadukovic for the three, and she knocks it in. Jana Hadukovic. 17 point lead. Now Duff gonna go inside and be fouled. 6.25 in this third quarter. 17 point lead as Salalangi gonna come back in for Johnson. Lauren, after a nice run for the Seawolves, takes a breather. She'll be back. Inbounds to Schwecki, put it up and gets fouled. I think Hadukovic is gonna be whistled for the foul. Hadukovic at 5'8", matched up inside on the 6'3", Schwecki. And Anna was just able to use the size advantage there, and she'll go to the free throw line. Schwecki, you know, for a post player, 85% from the free throw line, as she is just behind Castaneda in terms of free throw percentage. That's her 110th free throw, and she knocks it in. 94 of 110 on the year. Schwecki second one also drops down. E every point for the Vikings now is needed. Free throw line, anything they can get. More so than that, they gotta find a way to get stops. Alaska Anchorage still shooting 48.6% in this game. They gotta drop that number somehow if the Vikings are gonna be able to make a run. Well, and the ball that time took a real kind bounce and the Seawolves were able to come up with a bucket where it looked like it might be a Viking turnover. And here is a Viking turnover. As again, that mayhem defense, and Bland comes up a little bit gimpy. And I think the foul going to be called on who? Oh, look at right there. It's going to be Duff. on Duff. Yep. And boy, there's no question about that. And that is her third. So she has three. Rogers has three. And she'll have to go to the bench. Is Madison Coleman going to come back in for Western? And 
Well, foul difficulty certainly is not a friend of the Vikings either. Yassine in the lane, knocks it back out to Lange. Pass inside. Lange gets it back, step through up and under, overshoots everything, and a rebounding foul called inside against Cabani Fernandez. So Fernandez with the foul, ball back over to Western Washington. But still, a pretty comfortable lead of 17 with 5.40 on this third quarter clock as the Vikings attack down on the right side. They work it out to Coleman. She hit a three earlier and she hit another three there. On the season, Madison Coleman was 18 of 58. She's hit here too tonight, 20 of 60. She's hit an even third of her shots from behind the arc this year. Lange, back out to Yassine, works left. That's Goo. Gonna back it back out. Seesaw dribble, comes left side, puts it up and under. Tried to go off the window, this time she missed it. And Bland came up with the basketball and got fouled as she moved it down floor. Seawolves with changes as Nicole Pinckney in for Yassine. Goo out as Jackson returns and Lange off floor as Lauren Johnson returns and they'll all go back to the bench as we've come to a timeout. 4.58 to go, quarter number three. It is Seawolves 52, Vikings 38, Women's Basketball Championships on GNAC.TV. A look at Yasmeen Goo right there. All first team GNAC performer taking a breather on the bench is Western Washington's basketball as the officials taking a look on the scores table at something. Not exactly sure what they want to take a look at there, but they're reviewing something as both teams and the Seawolves have huddled up in the free throw circle. The Vikings now just break the huddle around their head coach, Carmen Dolfo. And the basketball now back into Bland's hands. Lexi to Coleman looking to Schwecky, really being aggressive on the inside, trying to get some post positioning. Bland left side. Cross courts at the Coleman, another three. Good! Wow, I haven't seen a shot like that in this tournament. Big three by Coleman. She's been the star off the bench for the Vikings without question. Fernandez, basketball, far side, could be five, boy, very close to a five second closely guarded call. Johnson, they work it to Jackson, open three, misses it, and Coleman now grabs a rebound. Feel a little bit of energy starting to build for Western Washington. They're within 11 right now. This is a chance to get it back within single digits with a bucket. Bland. At the free throw line to Dykstra. In low, boy, Jamaica got open and laid it up. Changes made is here are five new players in. Goo, and before they get on the floor, we've got a timeout here. 30-second timeout as you see that last play by Jamaica. And all of a sudden, the Vikings have whittled it down into single digits, 52-43. There is Bland with the basketball, cross court to, to Coleman, and that's one of her three threes tonight. And you can see that one went around and around and around. She went and finally dropped down the bottom of the netting. We, we don't see it often. No, we have not seen a shot hang like that on the iron in the last three days. We've been watching a lot of basketball. And you know, thinking back, the rest of this season, that might be uh, the most suspenseful shot we've seen all season. Well, you know, it amazes me, and you see this often, not often, but you see it occasionally, where the ball gets wedged between the, the, the rim and the backboard and stuck there. Uh, that I haven't seen that this year, I don't think, but that's something that is a rarity as well. You, and usually you see it on a jumper, right? Yeah. Almost never would you see it in any other situation. Saw it on a layup this year. Seriously. They left it short, got it stuck on a layup. Wow. I One time in my career, 
I saw the basketball went up, got on the back iron, right on the back where it's flat. Stuck. And stayed there. <laughs> it just stayed there. Yeah. It wasn't jammed. It just got up there and said, well, I'm, I like it here. It's comfortable. And here's the inbounds. And, boy, the Vikings come up with a steal. Get it off to Jamaica. She's doubled up. Her pass out knocked away by Lange, and it turned back over to Yassine. Sophia down floor in a big hurry. Goes inside, put it up, and gets fouled by Bland. That was a golden opportunity there for Western Washington. 18-carat variety, but they weren't able to come up with it. And then Bland with the foul back the other way as Yassine took the steal back the other way. Well, there's a steal in the corner for Western Washington, but then... That trap, we've talked about it for Alaska Anchorage. You get the double team in a corner like that, and the Vikings have had a really hard time finding their way out of it. This was no uh, this was no different. Yassine hits the free throw. Bland to talking to the official about that last sequence. Very cordial conversation. And Yassine to the free throw line one more time. And again, she's making a, a big bid to potentially be the women's tournament's MVP. Bland out. Molly Olson back in for Western Washington. I, I like Olson's game. She's very, she's a heady floor player. Pretty controlled overall as she brings to cross the timeline. Off to Coleman. And a foul called away from the ball against the Seawolves. I think the Vikings trying to post up Schwecky inside, and she got fouled by somebody. It's the third foul against UAA, and it's going to be on Yasmin Gu. That's, so it's going to be the third on Gu, and it's going to be the fifth team foul on the Seawolves, and we're in the penalty now for the last 329 for both sides. Jamaica hits the free throw. That was a nice-looking free throw stroke there. Trying to cut it back into that single-digit range right here with a free throw by Katrina. And pops it in and out. Ball knocked around. And Coleman takes it away. Here's Olsen. Basketball back to Coleman. Now to Jamaica. Dump down Schwecky. Lay in good. Great sequence of passes there to find the inside. Coleman onto the elbow. Schwecky starts the run to the right block, and then they find her there. Well, Schwecki has been much more offensive-minded here in the second half. Here is Gu playing with those three fouls. Lange, baseline, underneath the hoop, lay in, reverse, and it rolls through. Went with the left hand off the underside and got the nice English off the glass to put it in. Coleman down floor. Off to Olsen, return it to Coleman. Ball tipped out of bounds. It'll remain Vikings basketball with 21 on the shot clock. Here is Emma Duff back in as Jamaica returns to the Carmen Dolfo Vikings bench. And Lauren Johnson going to return for Lange. Stephanie Jackson in for Goo, who comes to the bench with those three fouls. 2.42, as you can see, on the third quarter clock. Inbounds, right corner, that's Coleman. Pitch out, Dykstra goes left to Duff. Down into the left corner to Dykstra. Takes it back out on the wing to Olsen. Free throw line, gets it down low, tried to get it down low, and it was tipped away. She was looking for Schwecky, but a quick-handed Seawolf was able to knock it away. And Jackson now into the forecourt, guarded by the taller Coleman in that matchup. Yassine off left. Valiva, who's back in the game for the Seawolves, to Yassine, and she's fouled by Olsen. So Molly Olsen with the foul, and Yassine heading back to the free throw line for University of Alaska Anchorage. And Olsen out, Bland back in, Dykstra out as Castaneda returns. You see in a 79% or throughout the course of the regular season and into the postseason, so just under 80%. And tonight, the Seawolves shooting better at the free throw line than they did last night when they had some, some issues there. Yeah, so with not this trip, but you seen the last trip when she went two for two at the line, that got him to 11 made free throws on 14 attempts, yeah. which was already one more than their 10 for 22 performance yesterday, and took eight less shots at the stripe. 
Well, they hit a couple there and again, push the lead back out to a dozen. Schwecki out, Kelsey Rogers, three fouls and all gonna return to go with Duff up front and Coleman with Castaneda and Bland forming the backcourt duo for the Vikings. Coleman, another three on the way, way off line this time, a little bit too strong. That's the first three-pointer she's missed in this game after starting three of three from deep. Jackson around the high screen by Voliva, takes it down the right side, pulls up, shoots, and hits. So UAA managed to establish a little more control of the contest. High post right, or actually out in the wing right, that is Duff. Down low, Rogers, open lay-in, good. Well, that's gonna end a 6-0 Seawolves run. Western Washington was able to pull within eight after trailing by as many as 18. But well, that was a good feed by Duff there to yeah, find Rogers. Yeah, it was, and lucky that it didn't get tipped away. It was very close. Jackson penetrates and scores on the other end. And we are inside now the final 60 seconds of this third quarter. Coleman near side and foul on Hadukovic. Free throws coming now for Coleman as Goo and the long range threat, Rachel Ingram return. They'll go with Yassine and Lange, and here's the free throw by Coleman, good. Voliva. So this is the initial starting five for UAA. Coleman with one more free throw to come, and this one bounces around, will not go, and the rebound taken down by Voliva. Leading rebounder on the season for the Seawolves. Inside 45 seconds now to go with the Seawolves up by 13. Goo, bounce pass, gets the return from Voliva, takes it underneath the hoop, kick into the corner right. They work it off to Lange with four on the shot clock, puts it up, the runner with the left hand gets it to drop. Boy, Lange's made a couple of those nice left-handed scoopers tonight, and she knocks that one down. Here is, Ro make that duff off to Rogers, lays it in. Second straight time, that Duff has made a nice draw and dish off to Rogers for the bucket. Now Lange got caught celebrating with her bench, got an earful from her head coach Ryan McCarthy and then Western Washington able to capitalize with a bucket in transition. Well, you, you're, you're still about 10 minutes and 2.8 seconds away from celebrating. Johnson back in, Dykstra as well as Lange hears it from her coach as she is subbed out. And here is Goo at the free throw line with 2.8 seconds remaining. Takes the deep, pronounced knee bend, shoots and hits the free throw. It works for her. Just, a, just about a 70% free throw shooter overall. She hits them both there. So what are the Vikings gonna do? Get it into Rodgers at midcourt, heaves it all the way down and Misses it offline right, and we're through three complete here at Royal Brome Pavilion. And at the end of the third quarter, University of Alaska Anchorage Seawolves, the top seed, looking to officially punch their ticket into the postseason as the GJAC Championships. There's that Lange hoop a little bit earlier in this third quarter that helped push the Seawolves out to that lead here on GNAC.TV. Well, basketball can kind of be a little bit of a simple game by the numbers. The Seawolves force 21 turnovers, a little better than 21 on the season. And tonight they force the Vikings into 19 and we still have 10 minutes to go. To the credit of the Vikings, they only gave up three turnovers in that third quarter. A lot better number coming out of the locker room as they start to make some adjustments. Here's Yassine, four court near side. Gonna move in the lane with a runner. It'll pop around and drop through as Sophia Yassin once again with a bucket. Dykstra, Bland, free throw line, pass into the corner, left side to Duff. Here's Emma, makes a move towards the lane, and well, two players were there, Goo and 
Johnson both there. It's going to be on Lauren Johnson. Go out. Stephanie Jackson back in for the Sea Wolves. And once again, Hadukovic going to come back in as Ingram onto the bench. Just underway here in quarter number four. Inbounds, boy, Jackson takes away from Bland. What an athletic defensive play. Gets it off to Hadukovic, who lays it in. That's a great extra pass as well. Jackson had a couple defenders around her. So Hadukovic has the trailer off to her left. That opened her up for the easy layup. Dykstra to the high post, Jamaica. Dished down, knocked away. Tried to get it to Rogers, but Voliva was there to strip it away and give it back to the Sea Wolves. Jackson guarded by Rogers in a bit of a switch. Head of the key, step back three on the way, good. And now it becomes a 22 point game. Well, I tell you, the Vikings fought back to within eight and they have now seen a big onslaught and Carmen Dolfo knows it and she calls a timeout right here. 8.40 to go in the contest. It is University of Alaska Anchorage 73, Western Washington 51. It's the 2020 GNAC Women's Basketball Championships. Jackson with the pass off to Hadukovic for the lay-in that helped build the lead. You're watching the championships exclusively on GNAC.TV. Here's Jackson with that step back three for UAA just a moment ago as we're back to live action here with Jamaica and the basketball and fouled by Voliva. So it's going to be Western Washington. Already two fouls against UAA in this fourth quarter. Bland triggers it in from the baseline into the corner to Duff. To Dykstra, picks up the dribble. That's what UAA wants you to do, pick up the dribble. And here's a long three in the corner by Duff. And the rebound tipped into the hands of Boliva. Jackson out of backcourt. Met by Jamaica out high, takes her across the top. And Katrina gonna be called for the foul on the outside. Ryan McCarthy looking on. He keeps that paper in the left hand. He, he has some notes on it. I think he actually writes himself some notes throughout the course of the contest as well. As I mentioned, I saw him work out yesterday. And before the game, they were still putting in plays. Yeah, well, so I think he, he runs the, the same kind of uh, coaching notepad that Jim Shot Western Oregon did. They have their list of plays on there, and they're tallying away how many times they've run them in a game, make sure they're not getting too uh, preferential with what play they're running, getting into a pattern. Well, here's the play I'd run. Yassine, get her the ball, let her shoot. She's got 19 today, 40 in the tournament. Jamaica out, and Castaneda returns for Western Washington. Jackson with the inbounds, Duff on her around the screen. Bland comes over to pick her up on the switch across the top to Voliva. She'll hand it off right to Hadukovic as the shot clock is running down. Hadukovic with five, Jackson long three, back rims it, rebound by Duff. Well, Jackson's having a good game. She's tied her career high here tonight, 11 points in this one for. Travel there by Castaneda. And for the Sea Wolves, Fernandez and Hadukovic on floor, along with Gu. Lange and Yassin. So with the exception of Fernandez in the post, these are the starters. Lange, hand off to Hadukovic. Now Yassin to Goo is the weave action to alleviate some pressure out front. Yassin coming around the outside, gets it. Left corner, across the top to Goo. Five on the shot clock. Yasmin going to take it to the free throw line. Baseline, Fernandez, jumper, good. Well, you can't use the shot clock much better than that. Here's Duff 
Right corner, Bland, three, and she answers right back with the Long Ranger. And the three point shot makes it 74 51 as Carmen Dolfo calls a quick timeout. And, and now your point that you made a little bit earlier, Dustin, very evident. You can't trade baskets anymore. No. Uh, right now, you've got to make stops and not one, not two, but you've got to make a series of stops here if you have any hopes of getting back into this contest. Should mention the fact that we have seen some great Seawolves players in the past who have come to this tournament, and uh, because of that, they have walked away with tournament honors. Now, Megan Mullings did it in 2016. Hannah Wandersee did it just last year. And again, I'm not so sure that maybe it's not going to be back-to-back uh, MVPs as I think Sophia Yassin has made a great case for herself here tonight after her career 31 high point performance yesterday. And let's just see Wolves melt down and lose this game. Sophia Yassin will be our tournament MVP. Trevor Jasinski was for the men's team, by the way, for Western Washington, which won earlier tonight in the men's actions. This is the first time we've had a actual legitimate doubleheader in the conference championships. Here is Goo, gonna have to shoot it. Uh, she's not able to get the shot away. Did, did she get that shot up in time? Oh my, you see, you, well, that might have sealed it for her right there. Yassine got the shot up with, I think that was under a second to go when she got in, got well it off under the window. A, well under a second. It was barely off of her hand when the uh, buzzer went off. Bland, dish down, Schwecky turns and lays it up, missed it, rebound inside. And it's going to be a tie-up situation, I think. No foul going to be called. So strong rebound by Duff on the inside. And Kamani Fernandez picks up foul number two, team three on the Seawolves. And here's Madison Coleman back in as Castaneda heads to the bench. Coleman looking for the inbounds. Bland gets it to her in the deep right corner. Takes on the baseline, her pass out stolen away as Lange comes up with it. Gets it off to Goo and Coleman very nearly came up with a re-steal. Goo guarded by Coleman, spins away from her, goes inside up and under off the window for another basket for Yasmin Goo. And the lead now out to 26 points. This has really been the, the, the only contest that we've seen. And here is a three by Dykstra that's in and out. And the rebound by Fernandez. And again, Western, to their credit, got to within eight in the third quarter. But once again, the, the uh, defensive intensity thermostat was turned up to 10, turned up to high. And with that, the Seawolves have moved out to a comfortable lead in the final five minutes of this championship game. You've seen? Underneath the hoop, surprised Fernandez with the pass, turnover. Here's Bland on the run up, but look how quickly they get back. Coleman squares up, gets the pass, misses the three, and Lange rebounds for the Seawolves. Well, good idea in transition. It's about that time where you just need to start throwing up as many threes as you can if you're the Vikings. Bland had an opportunity for a one-on-one -on -one up ahead, but pops it out to Coleman, who had the open look on the angle. Well, Coleman had hit three of those in a row earlier in this contest and a foul called, oh no, travel called against UAA. That's gonna be a rare turnover for them. Just their seventh of this game. They've taken very good care of the basketball. And we have come to a timeout on the floor. 4.22 left to go in the conference championship. UAA looks to be powering on to another title here on GNAC.TV. Both teams returning to the floor. It's gonna be Western Washington basketball. We talked about Yassine with those 31 yesterday. She was only three off the tournament record, ironically held by Katie Collard and of Western Washington and Tyler Peacock of Western Washington. So Lange was very close to it. Or we should say uh, Yassine, I should say. Here's a long three on the perimeter by Castaneda and then bodies hitting the floor underneath the basket. And I think a foul gonna be called against who? 
Kelsey Rogers picks up the foul on the play after the shot. Try to get established rebounding positioning on the inside, I believe. Actually, Dukovic picks up the foul. That is her fourth. So the ball back over to the Vikings. And it's going to be the fourth on the Seawolves as well. So penalty the rest of the way for the Vikings. A chance to get some free throws. Now, as we mentioned, the Vikings, decent free throw shooting team at 73.4%. In the lane, here is Rogers. Puts it up, missed it. Inside, Duff puts it up, and she gets fouled. It was Voliva who was there, I think, who came away with a foul. Yep, Voliva with her third and now the fifth, as you mentioned. And we got some free throws to come for Western Washington right here. And Duff to the line. 73% shooter and she hits. Really, really well-rounded game tonight for Emma Duff. That's seven points now with that made free throw. Four rebounds, four assists, and a couple of steals as well. You saw Yasmin Gu there still dabbing away at that right eye that she got poked a little bit earlier. I wonder if she's still having a little bit of trouble seeing out of that. And here's Jackson, double team comes. Western now going to put up some full court pressure defense. Pinckney across the timeline to Johnson to beat that pressure. And the Vikings by necessity now are going to try to have to force the action here a little bit more defensively. Voliva to the right side. Three ball up and good by Pinckney. So Pinckney with a long range three. Well, the Vikings have seen some second unit performers for the Seawolves tonight. Knocked down some big threes, and that was another one. Here is a trap on the baseline, and Carmen Dolfo says, no, nope, let's call a quick timeout right here. And this will be a full timeout. 3.14 left to go in the game. Desperation time for the Vikings. Down 82-58. And only 3.14 left here on GNAC.TV. This is Royal Brome Pavilion, Seattle Pacific University, the host site for the 2020 GNAC Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. The men's championship decided earlier tonight, Western Washington with the win. And in the women's tournament, the same pairing, UAA and Western Washington, but it looks like it's going to be the Seawolves coming away with the women's championship. Entry to Rogers and she missed it. And the rebound taken down by the Seawolves. Jackson, four court double team comes pass underneath the hoop. Voliva lays it up and in. Western Washington starting to utilize a trap up top, double teaming in the corners up by half court, but that's opening up some opportunities down low. And a foul call down low, either I think on Voliva. It is Tanae Boliva, and she has four and free throws to come now for Rogers, 83% free throw shooter. And Boliva going to check out as Kamani Fernandez comes back in. You know, really, you want to talk about some interchangeable cogs? And again, players are not cogs, I understand that. But uh, the way that Ryan McCarthy uses them, he utilizes players and positions and has them establish what he wants them to do there and and they really can all do a lot of the same things free throws good but still a big lead now here's a trap and maybe a foul or did the time timeout, timeout was yeah. called okay yeah. trap came and a seawolf player was trapped actually started to maybe travel but mccarthy was able to get the timeout call, let's keep it right here. So it appears UAA is gonna move on to the West Regionals. Western Washington, what do you think? So, so I have a little bit on that right now. Coming into this week, Western Washington holding the number seven seed. Right. Looking at what was going on right behind them. Cal Poly Pomona, they lost in the first round of the CCAs. They held the eight seed, so no trouble there. Number nine spot was Simon Frazier. They were in the, out in the first round of the GNX. No trouble there. Central Washington gets to the semis yep. and loses to Anchorage. So not a, little, not a lot of trouble behind them. So given the fact that Western Washington 
looking right now, it's looking like they're going to go 2-1 and one this week. I think they're going to be okay. okay. The three teams right behind them all lost early on or in the semis of their conference tournament, so they should be all right. Rodgers gets the steal on the inbounds and puts it in. And the pressure now beaten by Yassine down floor. No look pass to Fernandez for the lay-in. She looked left, looked off the defender and found a wide open Fernandez for the lay-in. And here is a NBA range three by Bland. She doesn't want the season to end just yet. At least the conference championship. Jackson into the forecourt, 210 left and it's an 86-65 lead. Out right. Yassine. So both schools are going to have something to be proud about. And here is Yassine for three. It's going to be the Western men raising the conference championship, which they did earlier. And it'll be the UAA women doing the same here at Brome Pavilion. Schwecki coming back in with 144 left. And Jackson and Johnson out as Goo returns. And also returning for the Seawolves, it is Ingram. Inbounds, Bland, another three, this one no good. Coming in and securing the rebound, Duff. She goes out and shoots a three, misses it. Ball tipped and goes out of bounds to the press table there, not able to, being, uh, not able to be saved by Bland. And the substitution just keep on rolling though. Emily Motts. 5'10", senior from Canton, Ohio. NFL Hall of Fame city there comes in. This is her first run here tonight. Castaneda back in, gets the inbounds. to Dykstra gets it back. Now to Castaneda for three. Back rim, in and out. Rebound Dykstra back out to Bland for three. This is in and out as well. And the rebound tipped around and taken by the Seawolves. Goo in the backcourt. Gets it across to Motts, up ahead to Pinckney, or make that to Ingram, and she gets it back. She shot a three earlier, but now with just one minute left, the Seawolves with the basketball. Goo had it knocked away from her, and held ball situation, tie up situation. It'll go back over to Western Washington as a turnover there. Well, well you mentioned the hometown of, of Motts being Canton, Ohio. I don't know if you noticed the high school she went to St. Vincent, St. Mary's, and if that rings any bells with you. Well, no. That is also the high school of LeBron James. I did not realize that, but now that you say it, boy, I tell you, that's, uh, that's some big company to be, to be in, without question. LeBron, of course, never played a game in college. No, he did not. Straight in. So he's never known what the thrill of, the, of a tournament like this is. Dykstra, left side, Castaneda, three ball, good. And Jackson, back down floor, left side, and in and losing the basketball, Sierra Tate. Tate returns after a brief number of minutes in the first half. Just a freshman out of Fairbanks. Got away from the Nanooks to play for the Seawolves. And here's the ball batted away, Lange, and then tips it away again, away from Dykstra. Just 26 and a half seconds remaining. Western will conclude at least this portion of his campaign at 22 and eight. And the Seawolves will go to 31 and two, along by Bland for three, missed it. Lange with the rebound. And this will likely be the final possession of the game. Jackson down floor, circles back out and inside the final 10 seconds. And that will do it. So the final count tonight is gonna to be University of Alaska Anchorage, 89, Western Washington, 68. And congratulations to the Seawolves. And you can see there, they are the 2020 Great Northwest Athletic Conference champions. And as they had done on the four previous meetings in the GNAC championship against Western Washington, they come out on top yet again. You know, they may not be getting the number one seed in the West region, 
As right now it looks like that's going to be held by Hawaii Pacific. Yeah. But this is going to be an incredibly tough basketball team to beat come regional time next weekend. I don't think there's any question about it. And the selection show coming up tomorrow. Yeah. And, and I love watching those NCAA produced telecast simply because you, you really don't know. And it, there's always a little bit of a surprise in how the selection plays out. There's a good look at the coaching staff for the University of Alaska Anchorage as the championship hats are now being distributed to the team and they've all got them on or are starting to put them on certainly. So again, congratulations to UAA, but again, hats off to Western Washington, had to win the quarterfinals, had to knock off a team in the semifinals as well just to get to tonight. And with that, well, I think uh, as you have said, that probably is going to be enough to get them into NCAA West Regional action. You can see the championship shirts also being donned by the victorious University of Alaska Anchorage Seawolves. Let's give you the final numbers. We'll wait for the announcement here of the tournament MVP, but we think we know who it is. Western Washington tonight led by the 14 points of Kelsey Rogers. She only had one rebound in the game, just one rebound in the contest. 13 points tonight for Lexi Bland and 10 off the bench. Great performance by Madison Coleman, three of five on threes. Eight points for Anna Schwecki, eight points as well for Emma Duff, and eight points for Gracie Castaneda. Five points tonight for Katrina Jamaica, and there is GNAC Conference Commissioner Dave Haglin. And he has handed the championship banner to the University of Alaska Anchorage as the ceremonial photos are now being taken. After the five points for Jamaica, Dykstra with two playing but not scoring tonight. Monique Fierke played. She did not score. Carly Zaragoza, Molly Olson played. They did not score tonight. Eliminating I don't know how long you want to do that, but looking forward, what are the adjustments going into next week and possibly going down to Hawaii, possibly hosting? Uh, you know, I mean, just really focusing on us. I kind of think we're going to play these guys again, so um, that th that's the way Division Two goes. Um, but we have a lot of respect for them, and they've given us fits all year. So, uh, you know, just going back to the drawing board and making sure that, that uh, we're ready come come the national tournament. Coach, last question before we let you go. There have been a couple of titles under your belt already. Where does this one stack up for you? This one's pretty special. Um, you know, we have eight new players this year, seven new players, and. They just all bought in from, from day one. You know, everyone is different, but I'm just, I'm really proud of the new kids that have come into this program and bought into our culture and, you know, can, can put up with me for a season, and uh, it's pretty special. Coach, congratulations to you and the players. Thank you very much. That's Ryan McCarthy. We're going to send it back to you, Rob. Well, Ryan McCarthy, very happy, obviously, with the victory, and why not? A championship for his University of Alaska Anchorage Seawolves after they were picked third in the conference preseason poll behind Western Washington, the team they vanquished here tonight, and Central Washington, the team that they beat last night. So, again, they went ahead and established their dominance this year in the GNAC, and with that, as Dustin pointed out, they get the automatic berth into the NCAA Division II West Regionals. But... Their appearance in that tournament was assured long before now. Again, only two losses on the season, one of them coming to this Western Washington University bunch. The previous two meetings this year, single-digit wins, one by the Vikings, one by the Seawolves. But since that loss to the Vikings, the Seawolves have now won 13 consecutive contests heading into the NCAA Division II. West Regionals, and again, we'll know seating, we'll know what teams from the GNAC got in, we'll know that all tomorrow, but Dustin Dan joined us back here at courtside, and well, we know this for sure, Western Washington University men 
going in to the postseason. Seattle Pacific as well for the GNAC into the postseason and a third major.